Move over cupcakes. <laughs> Cookies are stealing the show. They really are. Our next guest is going to teach us some decorating techniques that will impress your friends at your holiday cookie swap. Julie Usher is a pastry chef, food writer, and food stylist, and the author of Ultimate Cookies, and she joins us now. Welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having me. This is beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. Like little works of art. Well, they, they look that way, but honestly, there's some really simple, straightforward, yet show-stopping techniques that most anyone can do. So I'm going to share those with you. Don't be at all intimidated. Okay, well, we'll <laughs> By the end of the day, you'll be doing the decorating. And you're decorating sugar cookies. I am. These are sugar cookies. We won't, we won't make them today, but I've got a great recipe for them in my book, and I think it'll be on your website afterwards. Excellent. Okay. Um, and we'll, we'll be decorating them with royal icing, which I've mixed Ooh. up earlier. And this is a popular icing, but a lot of people well, use Well, there are different types of decorating icing. The most common one is confection. Well, the, there are two common ones, confectioner's icing and royal icing. Confectioner's icing, the liquid element is a milk or juice or something of that sort, whereas the liquid element here is egg whites or pasteurized mm -hmm. egg whites. The difference being there's protein in the egg white. It causes the icing to dry really, really quickly, which has some advantages with decorating because you can lay down colors ah, very quickly. Ah, I see. So there's a much science faster behind process. this. So there what, is science what, behind so it. So what's in your... So Royal this is about icing. two pounds, again, the recipe will be on the website, but it's about two pounds of powdered sugar to five egg whites. And I mix it up very oh. thick to start um, because I, that way you incorporate less air bubbles when you're mixing it. Okay. And if you bring in too much air into the icing, it becomes, it just looks not so attractive once it goes down. So I start with it really, really thick, and I'll show you how I get color in there first. Um, I do want to say a word on color simply because, I'll let you put that in. Okay. Um, again, with icing, cookies, consistency is key. So you don't, you, you need a particular type of consistency for each technique. So you okay. don't want to go dumping in a lot of liquid food coloring because that'll mess up the consistency. So I work with the soft gel food coloring, very concentrated, a little bit goes a long way. I didn't so even know that was there are a few drops in there and you can stir that in. And is, what's the first technique we're going to try? We're going to do three techniques. The first is marbling. Marbling. As you can see on this stocking, we're going to do the body of the stocking only. I'm going to show you that really quickly. Okay. If one of you wants to work along, we can do it side by side. Okay. You want me I've thinned, to, yeah, let me, me take that. On? There you go. Um, I've go thinned ahead, that no, icing. No, no, you and I both do okay, it. Okay. <laughs> okay. I've got a stocking for you to work on. You're going to work with this tool, which okay. is nothing more than a, a dowel rod or a craft brush. Do you want to show us first? Yeah, I will show you first. Okay. So I've loosened the icing now for top coating, which is generally I add about a teaspoon or so of water. Um, to the icing to loosen it up because you want it to flow smoothly and not leave tracks. And with marbling, the key thing is to work really, really quickly because the royal icing, as I said, dries really quickly. And you want to lay all the icings while they're wet and get a fluid marble. So right now I'm laying the white down on the body. When I do this at home, I'm a mess. It's well, dripping did, all over. I did drip a little bit, but it's all in the consist consistency, as I said. So this is slightly thick. It's not really runny icing, but it still flows smoothly, as you can see. Like you do it okay. painting. Okay, so I'm, so I'm going to clean up that little mess I made. I'm going to put them down. Okay. Move the spoon out of the way, and we're going to marble it. I've got two colors, slightly thicker. They're going to go down in parallel lines. What and I, is it? Frosting? Of same sort? thing. Same royal thing. icing. Okay. It's just slightly so thicker, and it's been tinted red and green. So when you say slightly thicker, that, meant, that means that you didn't put as much water in it? Yes. I only put about half a teaspoon in to the okay. one cup of icing, as opposed to the teaspoon to two teaspoons for the oh. top. Oh, you you give it a yeah, you do that. I'm All working right. with a parchment cone for piping out these fine lines, and I'm going to hand that to you because you're going to marble next. Okay. Um, and if you, uh, I've got instructions in the book for making those, but if you're not handy with the parchment bag, you can also use a plastic baggie and just cut off the tip. Ah, that's okay. a good And there's tip. so many patterns. This is really versatile. I'm doing a herringbone pattern, which where I simply do parallel lines and then I draw the skewer. This is a trussing needle for a turkey, actually. You can use a toothpick. Up and down, back and forth. Oh, and it isn't it beautiful? It's a so really pretty. It's a beautiful pattern. So and that wasn't really intimidating. It. Not too bad. I'll do the lines for yes, you. Yes, that's a grand <laughs> idea, Joss. Should I move on to the next technique? Yes, yes go please. ahead. I'll do the, the next technique we're going to yes. do is stenciling, which I think is even easier. Um, and this is an example of it. This is a little more juiced up example of it with a border. And stenciling is nothing more than painting icing of about outlining consistency. Again, okay. the thickness of that icing through stencil. Right. There used to be stencils were things of hardware stores, but now they're stencils made specifically for cookies. Where do you get the stencils? Um, online. There's some great sources. Um, designer stencils is one of my favorites. Um, you can also go to the hardware store if you want. But these are sized particularly for cookies. Icing is crusted a little bit, so you want to give it a good stir. I usually I keep it covered while I'm working with it. <laughs> I couldn't get that one out. Is this the green one? Um, yes, yes, it is. Okay. Ah, there, <laughs> you there you go. <laughs> All right. And you've got, you've got skewers up there to work with. 
Um, I use this, the skewer again to kind of steady the stencil. I don't know if you can see. Let me move this icing out of the way because we're not using it. I um, see this would be so fun for your family to do. Yes. The holidays. So I steady this. The key, key thing exactly. here is just keeping that, keeping that in position while you spread the icing over it. And you just want a really thin layer because anything really clunky will leave little peaks when you lift up the stencil. Oh. So I'm just going to pull that up. And there you go. <gasps> Oh, cute. Pizza. That's this so is, easy, this though. Is, I would easy. do that. Do you That's want to try that? Yeah. That's really um, easy. The key thing, and I don't know if I mentioned this already, is that the top coat needs to be really dry. So usually I let it dry overnight because you're applying pressure on top with the stencil. And you can get generally uh, one or, well, I'd say two or three stencils out of one before you get icing on the back and need to clean off the stencil. So you said you, you did this overnight. So you, get, you have yeah. to bake your cookies the day before, and then you put that on there and then let it... Let it dry overnight. You can accelerate the drying process by putting a, a blow dryer or heat gun over it. it. But, yes. you know, not, not necessary. I like to do it because it kind of, by the time you've iced the cookies, you're ready for a break and you can... And you've got distractions, I'm sure, around the holiday time. So you can kind of break up this task and have it occur over a few days. So if you want to try stenciling with another one, go for it. I've got icing there in the, this Make tool a I use as an offset okay. spatula. I'm going to do the green. Okay. Oh. I think we have to well, do the, the white, white on top of the green. Oh, yeah. Well, right? you know what? Let me get this one. Or oh, red. How about red on green? Oh, red. There you go. Ready? Sure. Grab that green spatula. There you go. This is what I'll flip this. <laughs> can you tell that we're, we've yeah, got a lot of icing here? <laughs> Okay. Are right, you plop it on there and I'll spread it you know, on. Okay. See how it's crusted? That's yes, because it dries it really, really quickly. So when I'm working with it, it, I typically have plastic on top okay. of it. And that's ah. a that's a key hint. Normally I wouldn't work with and it if this it gets, way, but we and need if to it gets be really in and crusty, can you just you can stir it like that? To yeah, it? you can add a little bit more water to it or stir it up. Sometimes that's if you let it go too far, you know, it's just too far gone. Okay. Um, especially if you're gonna be working with it in a pastry bag because the little chunks of sugar will clog the bag. So So our third technique? Our third technique is rubber stamping. Yes, you can rubber stamp cookies. Yeah, we're, we're going to tell them we're not using ink. We're, we're using not using ink. We're going to use food color. Oh Ooh, beautiful. beautiful. That's perfect. I'm so yes. excited. That's great. <laughs> you can buy actually uninked um, felt or foam ink pads. They come white. I've used this before, so it's got food coloring on it. But So it works much the way you know rubber stamping a piece of paper would work. We'll put it here. I've got black food coloring. I, I like it just because it, it shows creates up. some nice contrast. Exactly. And so what you want to do is ink the pad. Um, just in the area that's going to encompass the stamp. Oh, you know, but what yeah, I'm going to do you? is um, actually blot it and oh, no, spread it a little bit so it's a little more uniform before you start. Do. Yeah, do this that. Guy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ready? So just um, just as you would stamp anything. The only thing with cookies is they when they dry, they mm -hmm. kind of um, dry with a little bevel in the middle. So rather than just stamping, I do apply a little bit of pressure in the middle of the stamp. So, okay. So I, I yeah. let it sit over. there? Yeah, sit there. And then I might press here just to make sure he's hitting the low spot in the middle of the cookie. And? And then pick it up. We'll see what happens. Oh! Yeah, perfect. perfect. I like that. Exactly. This is such a great idea. You have some book signings coming up. I do. I have one in New Canaan this afternoon, um, which is at Kitchens by Dean. And I have an, a signing at Breakwater Books in Guilford, Connecticut, my hometown, tomorrow. Oh, and terrific. then one in Essex, which will involve a small demo. And the book again is called? Ultimate Cookies, um, Decorating Techniques Galore, as well as about 40 cookie projects that build on all of these techniques. Oh, well, how fun. This is great. I'm going to try to do this. Absolutely. <laughs> right? well, when we do it, maybe you can come over and help us out. Okay. I, it, it, it is a team and family yeah. effort. I just, I think that's the beauty of cookie decorating. Creating memories. Getting everybody together in the kitchen. So. Sure. Julia, thank you so thank much. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. You're welcome.